curious about what's going on behind the scenes in the Paso Robles real estate market and how it could impact your buying or selling plans throughout San Luis Obispo County? Well, there's a lot going on. From the recent changes to the shifting market trends and the fluctuating mortgage rates, now more than ever is important to stay informed. Let's explore the details that could shape your next big decision. Right, Serena? The Paso Robles market has been anything but boring lately. And whether you're a buyer or a seller, there's lots of opportunity as long as you know how to navigate the market. But first, let's talk about the new buyer representation agreement, short for BRBC. Every buyer needs to know about this because you're gonna have to sign it before looking at any properties. The BRBC is essentially a mutual agreement where we outline how we'll work together. It sets a time frame, usually around three months, so that you have a dedicated support system in your corner. And it also clarifies compensation, which is super important with some of the recent changes. Yeah, about that. Buyers are now responsible for the agent's fee at closing, but the great news is you can negotiate with the seller during the contract and ask for them to pay for that. There's even a specific spot on the purchase contract where we can ask the seller to pay for the agent's fee. It's all about setting you up for success and making sure there are no surprises at closing. And if I end up representing both sides of the deal, referred to as dual agency, we will reduce our fee. It's really about creating a win-win situation. This is such a critical point that for potential buyers out there and for those that are thinking about selling their home, mm -hmm. you really want an agent there in your corner. And what they're referring to is agency, that if you are a buyer, you really need somebody there in your corner to help you negotiate things, not just price, but occupancy, repairs, and anything that might be unforeseen in the transaction, it's hugely important. Great point. So if there are any questions about that, let us know, whether it be someone like myself acting as a lender, or whether it be these two ladies acting as your agents. We're here to clarify those things. It, it can be complicated, but it doesn't need to be. So Daryl, we've been going over the new buyer compensation rules. A lot of our clients are asking how this could impact their buying power. How does the idea of buyers paying their own agent's commissions come into play on your side? There's a lot of different options. And what's most important about this is the communication mm -hmm. between us as a lender with the potential buyer and certainly with the agents too, because there's ways that we can be creative. And so, I mean, you can, in terms of compensation, I would say in, in most cases, the seller is gonna pay for the compensation. That's the way that it has been traditionally for a long yeah. time but there are other options and, and people should know about it. Right. There might be somebody that, that says, I have the means, mm -hmm. not only for the down payment closing costs, but I have the money for the commission. I'd rather pay that out of my own pocket right. rather than having a higher sales price or a higher loan amount. Right. That type of thing might come into play. Or it might be a situation where, where the seller may not be willing mm -hmm. to pay for the compensation. And so we would then go back as a lender and look at the entire file. We would look at the assets and say, you know, if we have something to work with there, great. Mm -hmm. And if not, then we would look at it and be creative, whether we factor it into the sales price. Okay. You could hypothetically have a, a sale at 700,000 and if you're trying to factor, let's say a commission, then maybe that's an extra 21,000. Yeah. You could have a purchase of 721. Okay. Or you could increase the loan amount and go lower down payment and the difference, you would have less cash to close. That would be another way that a buyer could pay for the commission. The most important thing is the communication for lenders. It may affect our pre-approval letters and what we do, so we all have to be on the same page. Definitely. But here's the thing, it's always been negotiable. But as Jen and Daryl have said, the seller can always pay the buyer's agent's compensation. At the end of the day, sellers are really just looking at the bottom line. Ultimately, it's about presenting the offer in the right way. Absolutely, and for buyers, it is important to remember that just because you're responsible for the agent fee up front doesn't mean that you have to cover those expenses out of your own pocket. We can negotiate with the seller to cover these costs and keep more money in your pocket, making it a win-win. For buyers, we just wanna make sure that you are aware of your options. We can be creative, and the most important thing is to communicate and present to you the different options and see what works out well for you. And that's where having a strong team matters. We all work together, agents, lenders, and everyone. The market is shifting, but that doesn't mean the buyer has to feel the squeeze. 
Exactly. The idea of paying your agent might sound daunting at first, but we are here to put together every piece of the puzzle. We know how to manage it, and having Daryl on our side, we're going to make the numbers work for you. It's all about communication and planning and setting expectations. And with your input, we can create a solution that works best for you and your family. Mortgage rates are improving, and, and it's about time because in October of 2023, we saw rates spike their their highest level. They were up around eight percent. Now they're they're dropping down. You know, a good price on a 30-year fixed conventional loan today is right around 6.375%. In some cases lower, in some cases higher. Just depends upon the situation. We believe that rates are going to continue to go down. We think that the Fed will cut rates in September this month. Policy meeting is around September 18th, thereabouts. And just as a reminder, when they cut the federal funds rate, that's the overnight rate that banks borrow from one another. And if they drop it a quarter percent, a half a percent, it'll be one or the other, we think. Mortgage rates are mutually exclusive from that. Mm -hmm. When they cut rates, that will affect prime rate automatically. That includes home equity lines of credit, auto loans, and credit cards. But mortgage rates are already dropping in advance of this. So we're already starting to see improvements on the rates. Because the rates were so high, what happens is that there's not much servicing value in a mortgage of let's say 8%. Most people are only gonna keep that loan maybe right. six to 18 months. Yeah. So what happens when the rates go up? So do the margins, mm -hmm. the banks charge more and that compounds the higher rates. But when rates drop, you're also gonna find that the margins go down and there's more servicing value from a loan like that. Families are more apt to, if they get a rate in the 5% range, that type of thing, they're more apt to keep that loan more like five to seven years, maybe yeah. longer. So the margins, the spread is what it's called, is also coming down. So as rates come down, the spread will come down. That will compound the effect where rates will drop quicker, sooner. I feel like that's what everyone wants to hear right now. What can buyers expect as we move forward? Well, that's a good question. It, I think interest rates will continue to improve. As rates go down, that helps with your purchasing power, helps with lower payments. And you know, previously, we've been in a situation where it feels like the values have been up and so have the rates. So there's been fewer, <laughs> there's been fewer transactions, fewer right. buyers. Now that the rates are coming down, we expect that there's gonna be more demand to buy. There's, those buyers never went away. They've been waiting. Anticipate that there's when the rates go down, there's gonna be more competition. There's still gonna be a shortage of homes, short supply, but maybe with some luck as the rates come down, it will also help to loosen up the market a bit because I feel there's pent up demand for people to move. People's housing needs have been changing. That's where it's important they talk to you. Yeah. And that we, we act in, in unison to, mm -hmm. to help each and every buyer, each homeowner, because we really need all of us mm -hmm. to make important decisions. No doubt about it, there, there, there's still a lot of uncertainty out there in the news. So mm -hmm. there will be ups and downs with the market, but overall there it will continue to downtrend. I mean, as long as inflation and the economy are cooling, that, that's going to cause a downward trend to interest rates. That and globalization. Mm -hmm. our, our rates in the United States are, are higher than in other places, mm -hmm. like Canada, for instance, mm -hmm. Japan, even the European Union. So globalization also matters in our business. I think that you know, rates are down at least a whole percent this year already. That trend will help clients. That's where the solution solving part of the business to me is really fun. You really have to look at the whole picture and get the input from the client. And what if we could show you a way where you could buy the house, but also help them with consumer debt and things like that. So I, I often say that we use the loan application as a roadmap so that we can make recommendations from a long list of products and then with the help of, of you guys, the real estate agent, you know, there's ways where we can problem solve, help to pay off debt, accomplish other objectives, like find funding retirement, but also helping them to purchase the home of their dreams. And that's huge if you're looking to purchase here in Paso or anywhere on our central coast. And just as a reminder, you know, the longer that that homeowner is in the market, they're going to benefit from three different things. Mm -hmm. I know you guys know this because we've talked about it before, but you as a buyer are going to benefit from amortization. That's paying down your loan amount. You're going to benefit from appreciation. That's where your home appreciates in value and you build more equity that way. And then the third thing would be the tax deductions. Mm -hmm. you know, other than pride of ownership, those are some of the biggest reasons why people buy real estate is yeah. to build wealth. And save money in taxes. Yes. yes.
Lower rates mean more buying power, which can help offset some of the higher prices that we've been seeing throughout the Central Coast and all over the country. So even if rates aren't exactly where you want them, it's important to keep an eye out on the overall trend so that you can make your move when they finally do hit that sweet spot that you've been looking for. Right, and that's why it's so critical to know your magic number. Just knowing what your comfort level is with monthly payment, because then we can back into that number. Because ultimately, when you own that home, you're also going to own that mortgage, and so you have to be comfortable. Knowing that magic number, talking with you to figure out what that comfort zone is, mm -hmm. definitely important. That's correct. And know that Daryl's here to help make sure that you're pre-approved and ready to go. Being ready is an important point, and the way that I like to work, we I like talking to each client up front, and whenever possible, I like to meet with them, yeah. and then that way it, it helps us to be more efficient in processing that loan, and we can work on the pre-approvals and do them quicker. It's a big part of being ready. It's just having everything together and then that way when that property comes up you're ready to make the offer. We're able to furnish the pre-approval letter. We're more adept at serving you that way. Definitely makes the process smoother for you as the buyer. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The process doesn't have to be difficult. So now we're going to dig into what's currently happening. According to the California Regional MLS, in our Slow County residential real estate market. So right now we're sitting at about six months of inventory, which means we're really at a balanced market. Not too hot, not too cold, just right for both buyers and sellers. And homes are still moving pretty quickly if they were priced right. The average days on market is 15 days, which is just a little bit over two weeks. Even though we've got more inventory than we did earlier this year, you still need to be quick on your feet if you see something you like, because trust me, things are moving faster than you think. Then there's pricing, and that's where it gets interesting. Prices are definitely bouncing around a bit this year. Last month, we hit an all-time high of $925,000 for a median home price in Slow County. And this month, it dipped a little bit to $875,000. It's a bit of a yo-yo, but overall, the market is pretty stable when you look at it from the bigger picture. It's like the market has commitment issues. One minute it's all in, one minute it's backing off. But hey, that's real estate for you guys, right? It is. Definitely. What matters is we ended last year at 881,000, so we're really not too far off from that number. And if you guys have any questions about what the median price means, please reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to help you. Being it, that the values have been up, equity has been up, so it creates a lot of opportunity for those that are homeowners too. And so nationally, close to 40% of the people out there own their homes free and clear, That's which is crazy. a very high number. It's over 30%, close to 40. And most people on average have almost $300,000 in equity. That's a lot perhaps more. Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, or, or buying all cash, there, there's a lot of different options out there for how the, how you might purchase your next home. Yeah. And that's where it's good to talk to somebody like us. Yeah, that is a game changer. And with 32% of buyers paying all cash, having that kind of equity can really give you an edge in our market. It's about making strategic decisions now so you're not caught up in a rush when more buyers jump into our market. And let's face it, does it ever feel like a good time to buy? Not really. The best time to buy is when it's right for your family circumstances and your financial situation. Best time to buy is when you need a house. Exactly. And not chasing the highs and lows of the market. In the 70s, people held off buying and it cost them 20 years of equity in their home. The key is get in when you can and let time work in your favor. That's why the old saying still stands, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. Whether you're buying, selling, or just curious, having a plan and staying informed makes all the difference. So if you're thinking about making a move to Paso Robles or the beautiful Central Coast, we are here to help every step of the way. Whether it's your first home, your dream home, we're tapping into your equity. Let's talk strategy and make it happen. We're committed to making this process as smooth and simple as possible, and maybe even a little fun. Got questions? Drop a comment below or reach out directly. I agree. I think the process should be fun and exciting wherever it can be. So if you have questions about interest rates and loans and different solutions out there, please reach out. I'd love to help you and assist you. If you're serious about making a move to Paso Robles or anywhere on the Central Coast, don't miss out on grabbing your free relocation guide located below. It's packed with everything you need to know on how to make your transition smooth and successful. Hit the bell to turn on your notifications and never miss out on an insider tip. Here's to planning your next move. Cheers! Cheers.